Good morning. This is the Board of Public Works Subcommittee, the Reuse Committee, and today is April 3rd, 19, uh, 19. No. <laughs> 1973. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order, and Jessica will be with us shortly, I expect. The first item on our agenda is to <coughs> discuss potential en endorsement of the expanded polystyrene or styrofoam band that Paul Spector... Can we just sorry? go around and introduce ourselves? Sure, sure, that's a want. good idea. We're going to introduce ourselves. I'm Susan Waite. Rosemary Schmidt. David Shearer. Paul Spector. Debbie Slavin. Diana Riddle. John Sass. Mac Everett. Roger Berman. Peter Rackenbush. Great. And David is joining us, joining the committee. He is replacing MJ and... Paul is um, here about the ban. And the ban, as I understand it, is somewhat modeled after the one that passed in Amherst a year or so ago that became effective January 1st. And if you would, wouldn't mind just kind of giving us an overview of, of the ban and um, what, what it would mean for the average restaurant owner. Yeah. So first of all, it's just yeah. one question. Yes. Is it exactly the same? Orphans? Yes. Wording? Yes. I mean, it seemed to. Okay. Yes. And I'm here more in the kind of the political, in a good sense, role <laughs> of just wanting to get you guys to endorse this. Um, this has not been kind of the, the. I have not been dealing a lot with the content of the ban itself. Um, Jesse Adams could not make it this morning. He basically wrote the ban, the, the ordinance, which is almost identical. So. You know a lot more about that piece than I do mm -hmm. and can speak to that with all the questions. I just came this morning to say what w we hope the process would be, which would be we are looking, Jesse and I are going to introduce this to the City Council fairly soon. We thought the best strategy to do that would be to have other endorsers on board rather than just City Council. So for most ordinances, what you'll see is one, two, or three city councilors endorsing an ordinance that moves forward. On occasion, and especially when you have an ordinance that might produce a good deal of community conversation, it's a better plan, and it actually produces a, a, a better dialogue, to have other endorsers, not just city council members. And so we were hoping <coughs> to come to you, to go to the Energy Commission, which I am a member of, uh, the Youth Commission actually has picked up on this already and has endorsed it. They actually were moving this simultaneously, we didn't know, while Jesse and I were kind of doing you know, our strategy about what to do. And the Youth Commission basically called us and said, hey guys, would you support this band? We said, well, we've been talking about it the last few weeks as well. I think it emerged when we all saw that Amherst was able to pass the band. And we said, why aren't we doing this here? Um, so what we were hoping to do was get your endorsement, Energy Commission endorsement, your suggestions on other people who might endorse this. So when we move it forward, it has a, a variety of, of people. Um, I believe we will also have one other councillor who will be endorsing the ban, and I think that would be Councillor Labarge. And that gives us a little bit of a cross-section, too, in terms of board representation, slightly different constituencies between a Ward 2 constituent, because there's a tendency to look at Ward 2. I'll just tell you, because it's kind of the Ward 2 is kind of the liberal wealthy ward who's mm -hmm. willing to pass all of these things and pass on burdens to the rest of us. <laughs> we hear this in public statements, so mm -hmm. in the University Council meetings. And so it seemed like a good idea to also engage a counselor who's from Ward 6, who does not have that particular criticism, mm -hmm. who would be, who has told us she'd be behind the ban. And, and so again, in terms of what it would mean for individual restaurant owners, because this ban, as most of you know, and you've probably read about it, basically applies to commercial eating establishments of using styrofoam. And so it actually does not apply to many of our current restaurants who are already on takeout or don't do this and have made the changes, including some of the fast food restaurants. But again, this is your area of expertise. You dealt with this. And Amherst, I think the biggest opposition we're going to find is, my understanding is what you did, is from Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. um, who still use styrofoam, styrofoam cups. Many of our local folks don't. 
Um, what I've been told is that the initial, like a few years ago, that the initial reaction of the fast food industry especially was this will be incredibly costly. It turns out there are substitutes for this. So Can you I'm actually here to be interested in, in getting educated more on what mm -hmm. your process was. Mm -hmm. And Jesse and I certainly will meet with you more to sure. understand it. Can you mention a few? I mean, I know re um, recyclable stuff exists, like a permanent distributor in Greenfield. But what's going to replace for the vast majority, like the Dunkin' Donuts? Well, I think if you could address that, because I know you have sure. to deal with that at sure. Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the replacements, you know, we, we encourage people to go compostable or recyclable. And some of the replacements are neither. And some of the places who have chosen those replacements gleefully, gleefully tell people this um, as they start complaining or, you know, remarking on the new cup. Um, so that's been a little bit of a disappointment, but the whole, the whole strategy was to start moving people more in the direction of um, biodegradable kind of materials um, and and potentially even reusable materials. So uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, we thought were, um, the, the other advantage is that other communities have started doing this as well. So we're not, um, Amherst wasn't the first community. Uh, the first community in Massachusetts was Great Barrington who banned styrofoam food containers in 1980 something. And they did it because in the, at that time, there were some concerns about some of the chemicals um, and their effect on the ozone layer. So they had banned them then. There are, there are Cumberland Farms in Great Barrington. There are, there's a Dunkin' Donuts in Great Barrington. So we knew that it had been done, it was doable. Uh, we spoke with the people in Great Barrington. They said it's something that they've been doing for 20 years. You know, they have great pride that they don't use foam. Um, it, it's become, a, you know, a point of pride with the businesses. So he was very positive about it. Brookline passed their foam law uh, with a bag ban at the same time, I think, uh, the day before Amherst did, or mm -hmm. uh, two mm -hmm. days before we did. So, and they have, again, they have Dunkin' Donuts and Cumberland Farms and um, places like that. So there are, you know, there are a few places that are probably more affected than others. The the replacements for soup bowls tend to be more expensive than replacement for cups. So places that need hot soup bowls um, uh, might be more in trouble, not trouble, but you know, might have more financial difficulty. Um, and then we had the, the, we had some big pushback from um, somebody who does wings delivery in Amherst. And he said it was very difficult for him to find a replacement that was um, uh, where the sauce and the liquids mm -hmm. wouldn't soak right. through and it would keep the, the material hot. Um, I, you know, I, I at the time, um, you know, started, wanted to help out because I certainly understand that that can be a problem. And I, you know, the whole city of Seattle also has banned, uh, everyone has to use compostable material in the city of Seattle. So I know there are wings places in Seattle. Um, similarly, I think Portland has also banned foam. So, so there are other communities that have that have restaurants like these that have solved the problem or at least found a substitute. So um, that was that's one piece of it. We want to be sensitive to the potential cost increase. I think most people are happy to pay the extra nickel or whatever um, or two cents, whatever um, cost difference. The uh, when we when we spoke about this in Amherst to some business owners, uh, they said, you know, at one point we were looking at getting a uh, some kind of a buying consortium to help uh, lower the cost for smaller businesses, and um, that's certainly something that can be looked into. Uh, UMass actually came through and had offered to make their compostable material available to businesses at their cost. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't, we didn't really need to pursue it because there are a lot of alternatives out there and people have relationships with their distributors. We, you know, you, 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 <coughs> you know, these are people who, you know, bring pictures of their kids and I mean, they have these relationships with small business owners and so the small business owners are loath to kind of just say, we're not going to buy from you, you know. So they usually try to work something out. 
and, and that's at least that was our experience. We did not, um, to my knowledge, there is a stipulation in the bylaw in Amherst, and I see it's similar, it's very similar in this, that there's a deferment. If you are having a hardship, some kind of economic hardship, and cannot uh, switch, make the switch to, poly, to away from poly, uh, expanded polystyrene, you can get an, a year-long deferment through the um, Board of Health. Um, and so you apply for it through the Board of Health. So it's nothing that, you know, if it's really going to make or break a business, it's not, um, we're not going to force the issue. So that's a, it's a nice kind of out for people to give them a little bit more time. Yeah, just a couple of things that we're talking about to even make that a more uh, expansive policy. Mm -hmm. We're even looking at two years. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, look, people have been using this stuff for a long, long time to lessen the opposition say, mm -hmm. look, you'll have two years. And then I believe in Amherst you can also apply. Can't you even get an extension on that? I believe one year? so. And yeah. we're going to keep but, that but piece in. But, but you can't keep you can't, you can't keep, keep doing it. Yeah. The other thing we'd like some, some advice from you on yeah. is whether we whether we add the piece, because I don't think Amber says mm -hmm. this, of the requirement they have in other places to say, mm -hmm. if we're going to go ahead and do this, let's do it and say you need to use compostable yeah. stuff. Yeah. But we wanted, before we did that, we kind of were following mm -hmm. the Amherst lead, and now we're saying, well, mm -hmm. let's take their lead let's take it one step farther. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to put it into a larger context. We are going to come forward, Jesse and I, with a bag ban as well. Mm -hmm. Our decision was, and we could be talked out of this, was it was a better political strategy that to have one conversation at a time, that we're probably going to have more opposition to the bag plan, and that if you lump it together, people can start just being opposed to it. So mm -hmm. we just want you to know we're going to come <coughs> forward to ask you for another support, and we do the bag ban. Mm -hmm. Then I, I haven't got Jesse on board on this, I'm looking at, I need your help to look at this, but there are a few of us who are also interested in being a leader in terms of the plastic bottle water mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And that would be a third step, but again, that would mm -hmm. hit even more opposition. Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. going to look right. at this Concord, in stages. Massachusetts passed it. Um, yeah. 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 Well, I, I have just, I'm just coming down off of uh, the recycling, uh, the uh, working on the insert for Earth Day and into into the Gazette, and the theme this year is zero waste. And some of the statistics are just mind-boggling about especially packaging waste and the disposable waste that the United States has, has started producing. I think Jessica um, gave had some really great notes that she's passed around to this committee from the book Garbology by Edward Hume, and. Uh, I mean, the, it's, it's like, I think packaging waste has doubled in the last 30 years, um, and, and just all the disposables that people are using, it's, it's really pretty horrific. And, and if that's going to be the case, and we can't quell that quickly, then the very least that we can do is make sure that it's not going to be sticking around in landfills for 300, 400, 500 years, <laughs> you know. Um, Expanded polystyrene foam is not biodegradable, it's photodegradable, which means it breaks down with UV, you know, with, in sunlight, uh, which in a landfill it's not going to get. Uh, that's why it breaks down into smaller pieces in the marine environment, then becomes problematic for animals because it has the sun um, that it can, uh, is it that it can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does the styrene oh, sorry. actually? Uh, Road Me and question. then Roger and then you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to say three. Did you have a specific question for what she just said? Yeah. Go ahead. Just uh, does styrene actually break down, or does it just break into smaller particles? Expanded polystyrene breaks into smaller chunks. Mm -hmm. The actual so styrene. It's still I'm told that, um, and there are you know there's a polymer science department in Amherst. So um, I'm told that styrene itself, while it's while it is um, a questionable material, once it is in the, once it is um, in the resin, once it has become part of the, uh, I forget the, the scientific term, once it is, it w once it is part of the polymer, it is relatively stable in the polymer. There is, um, so, so I don't know what would happen, you know, how long it would take, for instance, for styrene to leach out of expanded polystyrene polymer. 
So just so you know that when you see PS, I think it's a six um, in the resin identification <coughs> system, uh, uh, that's polystyrene, a six. So there are clear things that are polystyrene and then there's the foam. And essentially the foam is the polystyrene with air bubbles blown into it, mm. which makes it puffy and gives it the insulating properties. Mm. So um, I wanted to just say, um, as a former restaurant owner 15 years ago, maybe maybe 18, I don't know exactly, we made this decision to do, and it there was a little bit of a cost involved, but it was something that we felt was better. So it's totally doable. There is a history there. And second, that the small, I work with student businesses at UMass, and all of them are totally, mm -hmm. in the last five years, went this direction. Mm -hmm. And their revenues have to cover their expenses. It's not a cheap thing, but it's doable mm -hmm. if you are, have that commitment. Mm -hmm. but, they <coughs> but they have compost <coughs> bins there to collect this. That's compost, yeah. right. but, yeah. but it, yeah. that's, yeah. That's Roger. the key. Well, uh, one, of the, one of the issues is the cost, but you know, communities adopt it. But want to say to work on competition. Right. Well, and, and, and one of the things that I personally feel strongly about is that there has to be a way that we have to start getting people to think about all the waste that we're producing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of crept up <coughs> on us with the advent of plastics and disposable plastics mm -hmm. over the last 50 years. And, and I don't think people realize what kind of waste that they're generating. And not only are they generating waste to the curb, but there are there are statistics about upstream waste that is produced mm -hmm. in order to make the material that we purchase in the stores, mm -hmm. and and there are it's something it's I I have a hard time believing this, but they said um, it's for each one barrel of waste that we put curbside, there are seventy upstream mm -hmm. that were that were used mm -hmm. to um, to create the materials mm -hmm. that that we are throwing away. And so that's a that's a just incredible amount of waste. Mm -hmm. And so this is a this is a first step to kind of say that this community doesn't support that, and this community m m sees that uh, we need to make changes. Which is my second question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, aside from the longevity of polystyrene, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the difference in impact to the landfill if we, if we don't go compostable? If we don't go compostable. If we don't go compostable. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same impact, the same volume of materials going into the landfill will have an effect. We did, we did a little bit of research um, as far as volume is concerned. Mm -hmm. the, the other problem with expanded polyurethane <coughs> is that it's air. So it's, it's very, very bulky. And so when you talk about a bulky thing uh, versus something that might not be recyclable, but it's less bulky, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it does, I mean, it's interesting there are so many uh, landfills that are closing in this area. I wonder, you know, I mean, when you think of all the the, the um, styrofoam packaging and everything that gets mm. thrown away, I just can't help but wonder if our landfills would have, mm. how much mm. slower our mm. landfills would have mm. filled up if we hadn't been using all the packaging and the and the cups and everything that are styrofoam. Mm. Because it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it does mm. compress a little bit with the big machinery that they roll over and the, you know, but it's, it's still, I mean, try to compress a, a, a poly, uh, expanded polystyrene cooler, you know, those, those <laughs> coolers that you get for $2. Mm -hmm. You know, if you try to compress that, even if you step on it and run it over with your car, it's not going to compress. So, so as far as landfill volume, I think it's pretty substantial and, it, and it's hard to get, it's hard to get data on that. It's hard to get data, frankly, on anything about expanded polystyrene. <coughs> um, there, th there's just not a whole lot out there. There was, <coughs> according to the Clean Water Action of California, there was a, a report done by the American Chemistry Council um, ex explaining that <coughs> recycling of poly expanded polystyrene wasn't economically viable. And this was posted on the American Chemistry Council's website for several years, and then they took it down. So somewhere they have a copy of this because there's an excerpt from it, <coughs> but it's no longer available. And and the they said it wasn't economically viable to recycle it in part because it's it's so lightweight and the the. Um, trucking to get it, the transportation to get it to the facility for recycling was difficult. They do have densifiers now that are kind of, uh, that are smaller, that you can have 
in, in uh, you can purchase a densifier that essentially um, takes the air out of it, and then the the blocks, the resulting blocks, can be shipped. So you know the, the technology has changed in in um, 10, 15, 20 years, um, but it still not, doesn't make a lot of sense to separate one more thing out of the waste stream, especially when it doesn't have a lot of value. It's it's so cheap to make that to recycle it is is um, I, I don't know. Uh, so New York City, just one last yeah. thing quickly, New York City uh, has a ban on uh, expanded polystyrene foam very recently. And they have a year, of, uh, they've postponed the effective date for a year, and they have challenged the American Chemistry Council to come up with a way to economically, and I believe Our environmentally <laughs> safely, in, uh, to recycle it in an economic and environmentally safe way. And if they can't, they're going to go ahead and ban it in New York City. So the, the, the industry has been given an opportunity, and it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. The, the one problem, by the way, I'd like you guys to address is if we ask on this ban that also the replacement be compostable, mm -hmm. um, then we have to ask that of everybody. Mm -hmm. So there are other things people are using now correctly that are not. So right. I just want you guys to talk about that and whether that's an intelligent <coughs> way to go in terms of the opposition we we reach. I mean, because that would be a lot of research to do, too, in terms of finding out what are all the restaurants using in this mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mean everybody? You mean us? Or well, every restaurant. The restaurants. Every, yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, I was just talking to Lorenzo of CET yesterday about the organics ban coming up. And as Susan, you were mentioning last Saturday during a workshop, Vermont did a multi-step you know, ban where they hit the large producers first, they wor work their way down yeah. to the small producers, so I'm presuming that's going to happen in Massachusetts, so why not enact and force them to use compostable because then those can be composted with their organics waste at Martin Farm or other facilities. It makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. w was there a reason Amherst didn't go ahead and do that? <coughs> <laughs> uh, no. Not that I recall. Yeah, it was just, I, I think it was, there was hesitation because they were worried about expense. Uh, we did get a lot of, right, which a lot we of may concern. Hit now. And you guys do have a lot of, a lot more restaurants than we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other question then is if we're asking people to, a few restaurants that are still using polystyrofoam, we're asking them to do something a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. And then if we're asking them also to make it compostable, we're saying we're asking you to make it more expensive than other folks. So the ordinance would have to be right. rewritten in two parts that we'd be making this, I think, as a blanket change for all restaurants. In addition to, I think it would actually have to be two ordinances. I do need to say that the other reason that Amherst didn't do it is because we were not as far along uh, with composting at the time. Mm -hmm. So you guys have had <coughs> a drop off composting that's available pretty much to anyone <coughs> here for a, a few years, and we had not at the time. So we were like, you know, you can't. If we if we had the all the all the um, the machine to handle more composting from the public, then that would make more sense. But we don't. So I'm sorry. Well, I don't know what er other people think. My idea is like put it in, in, and then have it be a negotiating point with a, as you get mm. um, uh, responses mm. from mm. from people. Because as I said. We were doing composting 15 years ago, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and most people do go to compostable. Mm -hmm. From you know, I mean, if exactly, mm -hmm. and most yeah. people do. Uh, it's, yeah. it's the um, I I overheard. This is hearsay, but mm -hmm. I, I I somebody was at Cumberland Farms and was remarking on the new cups, um, and the the employee said, and these aren't recyclable either or compostable. Mm -hmm. You know, so what was the point of that? You know, right. so so. Um, but most people, that being said, when you go to Amherst now, most places are using the compostable containers. So I have a question. The October 1st law that changes the compostable for, in, for institutions, are restaurants mm -hmm. going to fall into that or not? Yeah. If they, if they size, depends on size. Yeah. Yeah, how many? Yeah. So they'll have to anyway. <coughs> Large there's restaurants there's will have to. Do it. <coughs> well, they no, that's they won't have waste. to use containers. That's only food scraps. They'll have yeah. to compost what they can compost. But oh, they don't have to have that doesn't mean they yeah. can't yeah. use recycled. Oh, right. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Good. The chicken and egg thing here <coughs> is um, okay. I work for the uh, 
Edwards Church volunteering. So the meals go out in clamshell, styrofoam containers. <clears throat> Those go to a person, and that person has nothing else they can do with it but put it in the garbage. So even whatever you replace it with is still at that so um, at that stage. The compost, like alternative uh, recycling, collects is fine for the restaurants themselves because if they have anything like that, they can put it right in. But it's it's left the premises, so to speak. So now, how to handle that in a you know, if there's no compost place to put it into for the homeowner or the mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Well, at the very least, it has some hope of breaking down at some mm -hmm. point. Right. Um, whereas, yeah. whereas Ooh. with the expanded polystyrene, it doesn't. The the one. The one big uh, player that you guys have here that will likely influence the outcome that we don't have in Amherst is the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the hospital uses a lot of styrofoam. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that being said, we also have somebody in this Pioneer Valley area, uh, several employees of Hospitals for a Healthy Environment, which is a nonprofit organization that Greens works with hospitals around the country, greening them. And they work to eliminate various chemicals, and they work with uh, composting and recycling and stuff like that. So it's here. In so we, we've thought we about the present. hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've made, we, we luckily have some good personal contacts good. with members of the board of the hospital. Great. And, uh, you know, the hospital wants good publicity, especially right now they're in right. major competition with right. Bay State. This is right. a huge thing. We pretty much let them know, you know, you want good publicity and not bad publicity. So we're, we're thinking of that. We could also use more help from their organization we're talking about. But they also want you to know that the school system, part of the reason Council of Barge wants to be on this, is our own public schools are still using styrofoam. Now they're not a commercial, you know, I'm not sure they don't fall under the commercial, I don't believe the public schools would fall under the commercial they, piece, but we've got yeah, to move them along as it's, well. It's my understanding that the individual school sites are not going to be producing enough food scraps to be in that, um, yeah. to fall under that waste But would they, been, would they have been under your ban that you passed in Amherst? Oh yes, absolutely. Because okay. it's, it's, um, it's it's town property, town buildings, okay. so it's it's the common, it's schools. Our schools were already using bam, um, I'm sorry, sugarcane fiber trays. So we we had, had been able to uh, eliminate those a couple of years before the ban. Well, I don't know if somebody from the committee would like to propose and move. I, since I'm going to propose, I'm going to suggest that we take this to the board as well and get their endorsement, mm -hmm. if you agree with that, David. But I was thinking maybe a member of this committee could make the proposal, mm -hmm. so I'm not doing it twice. Mm -hmm. Proposal to uh, adopt the to support. support the somebody the make, a, make a motion to yeah. support, to endorse this ban, endorse um, the effort. Well, get, getting back to the uh, question of other compostables or other, or other waste besides the polystyrene um, it seems like if it poses a big problem for people um, <clears throat> that has to be considered but also um, I think speaking for, I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody but for myself it seems like that's the way we're going towards everything being compostable and maybe <clears throat> maybe um, again a negotiating point would be to say polystyrene first and then within the next two years everything something like that um, well yeah but that wouldn't be part of this is going to be very specific I don't disagree right. with that strategy yeah. this is very specific when we introduce an ordinance we actually have names of who are the co-sponsors of that ordinance right, right they are presented mm -hmm. and so this would be in the ordinance we would not be talking about anything else in the future because that's not how the ordinance would be written okay. it would be specific to this yeah. so I agree with it but what we're looking for is will you be of course we'll come back to you with the final ordinance you can always mm -hmm. withdraw it mm -hmm. and say look we didn't like what the changes because this will probably go through some changes we'll certainly come back we're looking to you to actually help mm -hmm. with the lead on this mm -hmm. but if something were to come up you can always withdraw that endorsement because you don't like some change we put in there but mm -hmm. this is to at least start that and so that when we do move this forward and we're hoping to do it within the next two months mm -hmm. um it'll have a few names on it mm -hmm. your the reuse committee being mm -hmm. the primary one we're looking for 
Okay, I will uh, propose uh, what's it called? Oh. Motion. <laughs> a motion that the, the Northampton Reuse Committee endorse uh, the proposed styrofoam ban for Northampton that Paul Spector and Jesse Adams are suggesting. Can we have a second? Sure. Okay. Any, um, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And I spoke with David earlier this morning. He was also supportive mm -hmm. of the committee endorsing the ban. He did have some um, uh, concerns because we, uh, our mission is not uh, crystal clear, but uh, when I explained that you were looking for an endorsement of the effort um, and, and just saying that, yes, we support this effort, mm -hmm. um, he was completely fine. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you sure. very much. Thank, Thank you for coming. Jessica, I'll speak to BJ about putting it on. Are you taking that as possible? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Jessica, um, do you want to go ahead and... That's just a reuse center report. Yep. Is next. We didn't <coughs> do the minutes yet. Yeah. Oh, we didn't do the minutes. No. Good point. We jumped left right in, didn't we? So I had some copies of minutes out. Did everyone get copies or who needed mm -hmm. them? I have one more copy here. Oh, look. I thought I could get it on the computer. <laughs> 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 nice job, Jesse. Yeah. I didn't yeah. feel like a lot of pressure here. <laughs> Does anyone see anything that they have concerns about? Can you approve me? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we've had a motion to approve and a second. Anyone, um, anyone is uh, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? They're past. Abstaining, I wasn't here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 one abstention. Okay, so we use center report. Mac, would Mac you would take that one on? I'll start it anyway, and then other people can chime in. So the subcommittee has continued to meet. Um, this is a committee that's working on the possible opening up of a swap shop um, sometime this summer. And um, we've been working on developing a business plan for it and uh, continue to uh, tweak that uh, and the appendices to it, which include some of us have been calling other uh, swap shops and reuse centers around the region and finding out uh, how they work and what their problems are and how to solve them and that sort of thing. And um, circulating the results among ourselves. Um, we also, I just sent around a appendix, appendix about other businesses in the Northampton area that are involved in accepting donations and redistributing uh, materials that we would be handling as well. Um, just to get a sense of what the competition would yeah. be, what's out there already and what we don't want to repeat. Mm -hmm. Right. Or that we might find uh, niches that aren't being covered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, David has been working on the finances. He's uh, he's handling the part, the, the question of a potential budget, and he's sort of preparing two different scenarios. One would be a kind of a very simple, down and dirty swap shop with very little money involved, and then a, the the other would be something more elaborate if we're able to, you know, attract funds and grants and and that sort of thing. So he's working on that, and obviously he can't report on that at the moment. Um, and actually, in, in, the, in yesterday's Gazette, there was uh, uh, an indication that tonight at the City Council meeting, they're going to be talking about the revolving fund that we are, we are proposing. One of the things we've struggled with in the past is money and how whether or not we can accept donations because we feel like we haven't in the past needed very much money, but you need some cash for publicity and other expenses that come up. And um, so... I don't know who it is that's been, some one of us has yeah. been exploring. 
Ro. Ro well, no, actually, well, Peter and Debbie were in touch with City Hall to, and asking a lot of questions, and um, the, the wheels got churning, and uh, in order to make it happen as quickly as possible in time for the tag sale, they went ahead and they're going to read it. They read it, going to read it twice so that they can put it to a vote yeah. right away tonight. So, Ro, do you want to, uh, do you have any well, more info Ted, on that? Well, Ned just announced at, Thurs at last Wednesday's meeting that that revolving fund proposal is on the agenda tonight. Um, so if anybody can come during the public uh, um, uh, com uh, uh, comment, comment, yeah. comment period to, is that to speak beginning? to that. It's at the beginning at 7, seven o'clock, I believe. Yeah. And so it's very exciting because it happened very fast. So yeah. thank you guys <laughs> yes. for right. doing that. And that's really big for us because in the past, when we've tried to think about how to accumulate some funds, we've gotten the message that it's way too complicated. It has to go through the city and uh, there's all kinds of red tape and hoops and so forth. And this looks like it could give us access to a small amount of money that we could easily revolve, you know, t to pay our expenses and that we also some, some of these events that we've done, we have pretty valuable stuff that people walk away with and people, uh, we think, would not be adverse in some cases to making a contribution. Um, and uh, We've also talked about fundraising opportunities like, like holding those types of things for a silent auction. Um, yeah, so there's some, there's yeah. some ways to, for, to generate income to support this without taxing the city, and so why not take advantage of it? Yeah, and I think there's a ceiling of something like five thousand dollars a year uh, mm -hmm. that, that we could spend from such a fund. But that's just the revolving fund. Right. That's not right. a different budget. Right. 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 And then yeah, and then and well, then no. Rose first, I want to say the email threads that were going around with fundraising ideas were just fabulous. I and I think everybody had such good ideas, and mm -hmm. and I hope it, at your dinner that along with names <laughs> that some of this gets formalized because I think. <clears throat> It's one of my things, because of Susan, is that reuse is not just about landfills, it's also about community um, integrity and um, uh, the idea that we're building community with this. And um, there is, um, the Board of Public Works have been, have been working and thinking about different aspects um, about um, the future of the transfer station and because it is losing money. So as part of this, we're hoping to segue or there is discussion on the board to segue into, into taking the funds that we have now and putting money into the budget to have a formal budget for a reuse center. Mm -hmm. So at the meeting <coughs> itself, we talked about $5,000, but I think that I've convinced Ned to maybe come back with more like ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So we'll see when we talk. We're going to have a final meeting on our budget on this coming Wednesday night. So um, and that would be for renovations of so the this, building. So I'm seeing revolving fund for sustaining the organization and also being a way to collect money. But then we would have a formal budget that would renovate the building, that would sustain the building, maybe even contribute to coordinator times which we feel strongly about mm -hmm. but but I'm assuming David is working that's part of the budget um, Max that, that he's working on in terms of, of budget I haven't spoken to David okay either, so all right so and maybe yeah. I need to talk about but yeah. but but I'm just excited because I think that we need both aspects you know one for being able to collect money right. at the events and event oriented and the other for sustaining the, the legitimacy of the organization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, if depending if we, if the transfer station does, um, the future of the transfer station is in doubt, then that can only increase. It's kind of a fixed costs versus operating costs mm -hmm. difference. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. so if we can do operating costs with the revolving fund, then the fixed costs, will, you know, will we'll keep low, but there will be some initially getting started. Why limit it to five thousand since it's not coming out of? Mm -hmm. 
taxes, it's coming out of participation in the grants, one way or the other. I think that that's more, uh, um, it, it can be changed, because number one, our but I, I don't know what the parameters are for the revolving fund. I assume mm -hmm. that there are some, no, in I'm order either. to, you know, that it's, it's kind of an exception <coughs> to the usual municipal uh, mm -hmm. world, and so I assume that there's, there's some parameters that they have to follow, mm -hmm. and they thought that we'd start with 5,000 if, you know, they yeah. said that things can be changed, it can yeah. be amended. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the ceiling is on and how big I think, of funds. Uh, yeah, I don't either. I don't know anything about yeah. that. But I'm just thinking it's a, it's a foothold, it's a oh, beginning, yes. and it's, mm -hmm. it Definitely. opens the door mm -hmm. hugely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good news. <coughs> You've done that. So any other details about the reuse center? Um, well, so the, the question was asked early, does any, earlier, does anybody want to go to the council tonight? And I, I'd be willing to go to speak in the public comment session. Uh, anybody else interested? Okay. Um, I think so. I'm going to look at my calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So Ned had asked, has asked me to attend. I'm not sure what my role will be, but I don't think I'll, I, I don't think it's appropriate for me to speak mm -hmm. during the public session. So mm -hmm. I encourage you guys to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So just to so then in terms of making a public comment about it again we're talking about um, sort of as operating costs to help sustain operating costs I, well I shouldn't use the word sustain because you use that in relation to the other budget yeah. the other the DP the potential DPW budget we, yeah. might, we might get this would be more for incidental expenses like publicity and uh, whatever I what, what other kinds. Yeah, I can send around. I, I thought I had it with me, but I don't. But I can send around the, the, the how it's written, uh -huh. um, and how it's going to be presented. Right. I I took all of your ideas about the types of expenses, and I and I wrote, you know, I um I made it a little bit more generic, but I said, you know, fundraising expenses, <coughs> um, silent auctions. You know, this would be the income: silent auctions, grants, um, uh, personal contributions. Uh, voluntary contributions, that is, and then the outgoing items were and things like event, yeah, yeah, event, um, event expenses, uh, uh, refreshments, um, potentially uh, uh, fixings or fixtures inside, um, advertising and publicity, signage. Those were the types of expenses that I said mm -hmm. that, that would be spent. And again, that can be amended. If there's mm -hmm. something that is right. glaringly missing at some point in the future, we could certainly amend it. Mm -hmm. And I would like to just throw out, and I don't know if this is part of the, I haven't read the, um, the wording, mm -hmm. that um, I would make sure, I would help to make sure that there was sufficient financial um, accountability for this fund. And I'm, I'm happy to help set that up and to make sure that that is um, that we follow through on that, and mostly uh, some for accountability purposes, <coughs> some for projection and what we want to do in the future to make changes on that. But it allows us both for collecting money and for spending money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the important things: collecting and spending. And mm -hmm. and I think um, Mac, it's, it's it would be great to emphasize that the committee feels strongly that there are opportunities to fundraise easy opportunities. In fact, we've had people participating in the tag sales being willing to to have us keep their deposits so that mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. so they can be spent on advertising. So so you know, if, if you can emphasize emphasize those types of things that the money's there for mm -hmm. us, we mm -hmm. just have to have a, a, a legal way to collect right. it so mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. Can I jump in here because there's a <coughs> that directly relates to the what's coming up on the 26th, which seems very close. Mm -hmm. um, reading through the past, we then went with a $10 non-refundable. Uh -huh. And we're we talking about this under event, event coordinator, coordinator update? Yeah. Okay. So we can just kind of move along. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. oversight, the oversight of this fund is would be then done by this committee, or, or I'm not sure how that works with revolving I funds. And I haven't, I haven't read it either. Yeah. yeah. So um, maybe I assume that I assume that it would be um, through the Board of Public Works or through BJ here at the DPW uh -huh. with with whoever's in this position as a conduit, sort uh -huh. of, or or the whoever's 
like the um, if we have like a rotating directorship of the swap shop like we have a rotating right. chair I mean it would be some it would you know it's not going to be super onerous but there will be some um, restrictions and parameters that will have essentially to the money would go from whatever money we could collect go to the BPW and then go into this account and then we would yep. interact with the BPW to, to withdraw it's probably the DPW that would DPW yeah, yeah. okay yeah, I'm guessing. Uh, I will volunteer to send BJ an email when I'm asking her about the, putting the EPS ban on the uh, DPW, I mean the BPW uh, agenda, <laughs> and ask her if she could forward us the uh, legislation wording. Okay, I have the wording. Oh, you do have the wording? Uh, I don't know if it's the absolute final wording, but right. I have the wording. Oh, good. And um, I just don't know mm -hmm. what other, wh how, how revolving funds work. You know, so right. I have the wording for this revolving fund, but I don't have the bigger picture of hmm. typically how they work in the city. Okay. That's what I don't understand. I wonder, so like may, what maybe kind find of out who to find out about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I imagine BJ might know. Patty Shaughnessy has a lot of them at the senior right. center, so she right. would know how they work. So you probably don't need that particular thing as much as to say that we're committed to accountability for it. Right. So um, can we can we go ahead and move on yeah, to the sure. next, well, next topic? I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is one uh, in low mass. There's something I'm quite um, taken with. And that's the wishproject.org. This is a slightly different model for. Um, in fact, it's based on the food bank model. They deal with 60 different agencies and collect things that are generally, I know, can't be sold, like beds and um, all kinds of furniture for people who are burnt out of their houses, um, other social agencies, so the emergency aid wishes online um, for what people want. <coughs> because a lot of the folks I've talked to at the swap sheds, and et cetera, the problem is with people coming to get stuff, not so much the bringing it. Although, talking to Lebra volunteer the other day, she said, well, some of the people are so classist, they think just, you know, just because they don't need it anymore and it's missing something, that somebody can use it, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, pr on the pickup side, I see a lot of problems. So there, there could be a more streamlined way of using it, of using our re-center more as a redistribution center with lots of folks who need stuff so that we're collecting like for the artists we're collecting very specific things starting from a small base maybe then big you know building it up but that seems to be far more efficient than having to deal with scrappers and people coming in to <coughs> basically you know, uh, vultures of mm -hmm. stuff when it comes in mm -hmm. um, it's a way sort of eliminating all that and going right to who needs what mm -hmm. And now we're going to try and satisfy that. More distribution. Mm -hmm. Salvation mm -hmm. Army is there. All your shops can have a representation. You know, all mm -hmm. the other shops, but the hospice, mm -hmm. et cetera, could all have representation. Mm -hmm. So that we're really dealing with how to get the stuff in and back out again, as opposed to always swap shed and people walk in and mm -hmm. take some stuff. And it's so it's, it's, it's for it's for organizations it would you're, you're you were proposing that organizations would take stuff away not I'm just individuals. We should look into how we could set it up <coughs> so we had lots of contracts mm -hmm. service net um, mm -hmm. you know, all, all, all the others in the area so definitely that a growth thing absolutely yeah, yeah. so absolutely. we find out what people as opposed to just taking in right. because yeah. and we can, can start that start it small because we talked about having a bulletin board mm -hmm. with what people want mm -hmm. right exactly. and so so we can start connecting people via the bulletin board and as we get our get on our feet and get moving it could potentially expand well, into see other things. <coughs> much more than an actual bulletin board that's good but a virtual bulletin mm -hmm. board where we really also, yeah. build this up yeah. so that people can go right online and say oh I I'd like to put her in a, a wish for bottle caps, right, know, whatever right, the hell it is. Right, that's a great, great idea. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say, Diane probably remembers, Diane probably remembers Jesus earlier on um, is talking about having spreadsheets where we would do something like this, and that's mm -hmm. just something that's always stayed with me, the idea of having, um, you know, you'd have to do it specifically for this, not necessarily um, related to, um, uh, uh, recycled 
or I mean, not recycle, um, recycle. recycle. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea that this is an important aspect of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. This is something that we've happened to do. So I just going to come going to the wishproject.org and to the Lowell, mm -hmm. the, put in Wish Project Lowell. And yeah. It's it's Thank a national it's a national great. it's a national thing. So. Sounds great. Okay. Diana, um, I was just thinking that along those lines of where to get rid of stuff, I think we'll need to do that mm -hmm. periodically at least. And mm -hmm. I I like the idea of people coming there and building community and being part of a mm -hmm. swapping and maybe repairing and mm -hmm. that kind of building mm -hmm. it out in that way. But I think connecting with organizations and getting mm -hmm. stuff out mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. instead of just sweeping it all into the landfill every month or whatever, yeah. however a lot of places mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. We've There's talked about it, making making certain that we're only taking things that are wanted and right. can be used. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, some months nobody shows mm -hmm. up and it's right. good stuff, but you can't hold on to it for right. eight years or right. Whatever. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we should move on to event coordinator. Updates. Yes. So Peter. Well, well can I can I pop first because my event is even before oh, yours. The <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm actually um, pretty darn nervous about this. This I have dropped the ball with publicity on this first event, in part because I was waiting to hear back from the shredding people, and he kept saying, you know, I'm I'm booked. I don't think I can help you. I don't think I can help you, and I didn't want to send press release out until I knew are we having a shredder or are we not having a shredder. Mm -hmm. We do have now a shredder, um, but it's it's very it's coming up very quickly and so I'm a little nervous and mm -hmm. I, uh, I I just kinda wanted to put it out there to you guys. Do you think we should just go ahead and do it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or or should Facebook we just scrap email. Okay. I agree because I think yeah. that the shredder yeah. device is something that people do on spur of the moment okay. anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Okay, so we'll, um, I'm just going to go ahead and move forward with that and get that stuff out um, hopefully today and mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so then uh, the next, oh, oh, but I do need, uh, David asked me, he's, he and Diana are working on volunteers and he asked me to check with people here to see who might be able to volunteer on the 12th. April 12th. I need, I think, I think I need five people. I can do it. John. Great. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mac. Yeah, I'll do it if I'm going to be here. I just, I'm just a little iffy on that, but okay. I'll definitely do it okay. if I'm here. Okay, and hopefully yeah, Jenny. I'm sorry? I will try, but okay. I have something else I'm supposed to be doing. With and Jessica, how are you? Uh, so we have three maybes and two yeses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Well, I'll 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 take that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter, I can see if we, we need. Do we need I'm sorry. A, I'll do at least a maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got a maybe. Okay. Excellent. So David knows <coughs> we need six volunteers. Roger will be actually one okay. of them. Okay. Uh -huh. um, my my only question is <coughs> whether or not to go with a ten dollar non refundable or a fifteen dollar refundable because the ten may not make that much difference. Mm -hmm. It's a rain or shine event <coughs> going over the past mm -hmm. paperwork. Unless, <coughs> if we cancel it, then that 15, 10 or 15 dollars would go to the next event, which is in the fall. Mm -hmm. So that's my question right now. Is, that <coughs> is it too ballsy to ask for mm -hmm. 15 dollars or not? What did we ask last time? 25 dollars to give the check back. But we was refundable, they got it right back. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. not refundable? This is no. non-refundable. This is a registration fee. Mm -hmm. So, Peter, how would you imagine if somebody paid the non-refundable and it rained and it was mm -hmm. canceled, mm -hmm. and if I we canceled it. right? <coughs> so the next time, the next uh, scheduled event, do I have to pay again? No. So, no. so if it was if canceled, you're register, if you're registered, okay. <coughs> you've got your fifteen dollars in, and we call it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's a light drizzle or something, mm -hmm. you can know, mm -hmm. live with that. But if it's just, you know, heavy rain or inclement <coughs> wind or mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, then we would cancel it officially. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Last minute emails out and so forth. And then they would basically have this space reserved for the fall. So they wouldn't have to pay again for no. the next event. Okay. And how many people came with the $25 refundable? It was down the last time. It was down the last <coughs> time. We didn't do the postcard, which right. made a big difference. But we had and a waiting list. And it was also somewhat short notice. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had a waiting list for the first time. <coughs> There's more than 58 mm -hmm. spaces that we can do there. Looked at right. The I think we had. I want to say 
I think, you know, 15 is not a lot. The, the, the problem is the more you, the more you, the higher you make it, the higher their expectations of mm. advertising are going to be. Yeah. What so promotion? That's, yeah. I mean, but that's free. That's, yeah. I want to know what everybody else thinks, but I would, I would say go with 10 and hopefully have a waiting list. Mm -hmm. that that's going to yeah. create more yeah. jazz than having paltry, mm -hmm. even if we make more money at 15. But mm -hmm. I, I want to know what everybody Yeah, I yeah, agree. Kind of something. Okay. For starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree mm -hmm. with that. Good. Right, so 10 non refundable Yeah. That will go toward publicity? Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, go, yeah. Next I mean, we may need to buy some signs, you know, some yeah. know, permanent signs, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. So. Are there any other events coming up after, I'm still still after Peter? We're so after Peter is, um, I mean, after that tag sale, we have... And just to emphasize, it's community tag sale and swap meet. And mm -hmm. Push Diana's for free. Right. Uh, along. Um, the 10th of May is the plant sale, so it's the garden pot collection. And We're the 3rd of May. Stuff. Kid stuff is uh, later in May. No, 3rd oh, of May. May 3rd. Oh, May I see, this isn't out, you're right. Right, that is sooner. Because okay. that's <coughs> Diana and John. Yep. So, Diane, John, Excellent. do you have any comments or questions? Uh, or? Well, um, it's, it's Pride Day that day, and because of it, felt awkward using Salvation Army as the pickup at the end uh, because of their uh -huh. view on gays. Uh -huh. um, so, Goodwill is willing to come and take the clothes at the end, but they don't want anything else. Mm -hmm. So right now we're sort of stymied as to who mm -hmm. would pick up mm -hmm. games, toys, bikes, things that they don't want. Um, I've checked pretty much everyone who I could think of between Diane and I, and no one wants them. Can so you go to Salvation Army directly? Well, we came, yeah, we, we could. We were we just we were just hoping that we wouldn't have to use them, yeah. but mm -hmm. we and yeah, they're, we may. They're one stop the shopping, yeah. which is the. Mm -hmm. It is nice that way. We have had criticism like the, uh, on surveys and things. We've had criticism for using the Mission Army in the past. Because uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, why? Because they, they're it's they a religious have, organization and they're they've come they're out actively anti, anti, anti They're anti LGBT. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Pride Parade doesn't affect our event. It, it's symbolic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it just not directly related. Yeah. It's just it's not very it good would, it, timing. It would be nice if we could find yes. But, you know, but we haven't come up with anything. Yeah. Yet, you know, and and people who have given us that criticism, I've asked them, like I've oh, put it back good. out saying, we would love to use somebody different. Do you have a suggestion? And I haven't gotten any response. Mm -hmm. Have you tried either, so. um, Hilltown Families to see if they have any ideas? Sienna, Oilfield? Well, we can try that. lots of ideas. Hilltown okay. Families. Do you know who that is? Yep. Sienna. So you'll do that? Right. The other thing, John, um, do you know Barbara Black? Yep. John, uh, too? Um, you might just check in with her to see if she's aware of any okay. organizations Definitely. in the Springfield area yeah. okay. that okay. might be interested in that kind of material. The problem is there's going to be some stuff that's not in great condition that's going to need to be, you know, I mean, we say it's a zero I waste event and it is, but if there's something that can't be sold, Salvation Army is throwing stuff out, mm -hmm. you know, they, right, yeah, they'll take right. anything, but they might. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if okay. it's a bulky rigid plastic, we're going to be prepared for that recycling. Because mm -hmm. that will happen at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Good. And then on May um, May 10th is the plant sale and garden collection and swap, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just pretty much a dumpster, and John can work that through myself and Deb, yep. me and Deb. But just the plastic pots. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have good signage so people realize they can take from pots. Yes, we, we need to have better signage, definitely. And the 17th is the hazardous waste collection, and that is, um, we're, we're, we've already um, sent out, uh, putting, putting word about that out. Mm -hmm. Debbie, did you have, uh, what's the status on the date for the <laughs> October event? Mm -hmm. Do you want to give us just a quick update? Uh, well, we have to talk about we have to talk about it among the four people who okay. are um, 
okay. running mm -hmm. things okay. either one day or the other. Okay. And then if people don't, you know, if people will go either way on the 4th mm -hmm. or the 11th, mm -hmm. then I'll put it out to the artists okay. and see if I can get back from them mm -hmm. what works best for most of them. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it also as a to be determined yeah. for the date. That, yeah. But but we do need to know because that does get, oh, uh, we sure need to book a place yeah. other yeah, than sure. if, we, if yeah. we're not going to do it on that date. We're, now, um, moving on the, the toy swap, um, I got some disappointing news. Oh, I no purposely did not reserve Smith Vogue because of the scheme and sale swap and I didn't want to have that happen again and I thought well perhaps we could um, do it on the same weekend and maybe we could even be in the gym while they're in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately the gym is occupied with LSS you know, with the leisure services. They have their football mm -hmm. starting up so we cannot be in the gym even though that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So uh, I conf went to confirm with the senior center that they were available that weekend. Have I had assumed that they were, and they have chosen that weekend for their holiday oh. dinner. Oh. So that weekend is not available. Oh. However, um, both Smith Vogue and the senior center are available the following weekend, which I believe is the 12th? Yeah, uh, the following Saturday. So that Saturday mm -hmm. is still before Hanukkah. It's still before Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's just a little closer to the holidays than That's I personally okay. would prefer mm -hmm. <laughs> because I kind of like to start enjoying my family life at that point. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, worst case scenario, it, it looks like that will, I mean, unless I can talk to the basketball people, but I'm doubtful that that's <laughs> going to yeah, be possible. Well, um, the 13th. The 13th. Saturday it would 13th. be the 13th. Yeah. Saturday the 13th. Or December 13th. Yeah. Yeah, December. Yeah. So I wanted to tell you guys that, that lo it looks like that's what we're going to go with. And I wondered if you had any preference over Smith Boat versus the Senior Center. I think that uh, Smith Boat is a little bit easier in terms of parking and mm -hmm. traffic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, people coming in and out. Mm -hmm. And also, it's just more relaxed. Visibility <coughs> also. Yeah. Visibility, yeah. Mm -hmm. and Visibility, yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. On the street in the street you can have signs. So, okay. Yeah, I think it worked okay at the Okay. Well I'll mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, we ha I have it tentatively reserved and I'll go ahead and put it. Yeah. yeah, I mean the only downside is sw swapping from spot to spot. People have it in their mind, the senior center, you know, maybe from last year and now like, oh where is it? You know, people oh, just yeah. get it in their head yeah. it's in one yeah. location. Yeah, yeah, although they made the transition pretty well last year. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the identity of the October event is still up in the air. That is, is it going to be like what Mac and I did last year with the, um, just the, is it going to, is it going to include the artists or not mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. still okay. in question. I'm looking okay. for vo more volunteers. Okay. Okay. Good. So any, any other? Any new business? No, we really <laughs> covered this around here. Thanks. So, we'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. We'll yes. Sure. A second. A second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Adjourned. Wow. Oh, good. We so we mentioned the next meeting. Hmm. Next we'll meeting. Um, May. Oh. <laughs> nice. So, John, you'll be. I will. And you will be funny. So did we look at a date? Uh, so um, in the past, in the past we have met the second or third Thursday and we, we changed that and um, we can keep with the first Thursday or we can move, no. move it. The Do first you Thursday is the first. That seems pretty early. Uh huh. Well, it's early, except that today's the whatever it is. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, so it's only that's true. It is a that's month from now. That is true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a board of public work? There, I feel like we had it on the third Wednesday because there was some reason with the board of public work throw wanted to have second. our meeting. Yours is the second. Second and fourth. Second and fourth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
Maybe it was Wednesday. so that she didn't have too many Wednesday. meetings on one day. <coughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the only reason. I don't know. Um, well, so if we go to the third, that's going to mean six weeks before we meet. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, we might need to meet based on the, the, the progress for the reuse center um, mm -hmm. business plan. We might need to meet sooner. Um, at least a shorty, and then read again. Um, May first. May first. So Thursday the first. Thursday, Thursday the first. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, everybody.